Hey there, it's Olivia Savannah here from Olivia's Catastrophe and today I'm here to give you a big book haul. I have 63 books to show you. These book hauls just keep getting bigger and bigger. But this is a birthday book haul. I'm not sure when this is going up, but my birthday was back in January, so it's been a while. I just haven't filmed this haul yet. So without further ado, let's get right down to the books. But I do want to say, if you sent me anything for my birthday, thank you so, so, so much. That week, things just kept arriving and I felt so loved and all of the messages were so wonderful. I felt so emotional and thank you. Thank you so much. I don't know, I can't even, there's nothing more to say, but thank you. I truly appreciate all of you. Let's get right down to the books. So the first two books I have to show you are from my good friend Hannah. Hannah reads way too much. She sent me two books for my birthday which is just too kind of her. The first one she sent is Jade City by Fonda Lee. This is a fantasy series I've just been hearing amazing things about. First book bloggers were loving it and then it hit booktube and I've wanted to try it ever since so I think I'll be trying this fantasy series. I've also been in the mood for fantasy books lately and I'm riding that high so hopefully I can get to this one sooner rather than later. She also sent This Is How You Lose a Time War by Amal L. Motta and Max Gladstone. This is a short novella that I've heard fantastic things about. It's a science fiction series about these two people who live on different worlds I believe and it's kind of romantic and apparently the writing is lyrical which are all things I like. Sci-fi, romantic writing and romance so I think this is going to be one for me. I truly truly hope it will be. Then Abby from Abby of Pelennor sent me a book and well she sent me two books and dried mango. I can't show you the dried mango that was consumed immediately the day that it arrived but she also sent me The Poppy War by R.F. Quang. I've already read this one and I really enjoyed it. I am looking forward to continuing the series. When I read this one I read it from my library so I really wanted to own a physical copy and Abby got me one so thank you so much for that Abby. I'm very happy to have this one on my shelves. It's a very popular book on booktube, I'm sure you've heard about it before and everybody's right, you should definitely read it. Lots of content warnings, it's very dark and gritty but it's it's very good. I especially loved the second half so I'm looking forward to the sequel as I think will be more military fantasy focused and that is one of my personal interests in a fantasy book. This one is from Daniela from Only If For A Page. Thank you so much Daniela for surprising me with Black Sun by Rebecca Rowanhorst. This is another fantasy book that I've just heard so 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 many good things about so I wanted to try it. It's the first one in a series. It's a Hugo, Nebula and Locus Award nominated book. I'm particularly interested in any Hugo nominees and winners so yeah, I think this is going to be good. Again, it hit booktube and it went wild and I just need to read all of the great fantasy books these days. Speaking of, my great writer friend from my YWS days, Taylor, she sent me Gilded by Marissa Mayer. I loved the Luna Chronicles back in the day when I read it and I also really really enjoyed Heartless by this author and Gilded is her returning to fantasy and it's supposed to be a bit more darker and a bit more grim than the Luna Chronicles. Taylor's already read it and that's what she told me. I'm really looking forward to reading more by Marissa Mayer so I'm very excited for this one. I only recently realized that there's eyes in the back of this crown so there's a face. I did, I did not know that for a long time. And Hannah from Ladette M was unhauling books and she unhauled Ace of Spades but yes Ace of Spades another one that took booktube by storm but it has been quite decisive ever since. I've been seeing positive things, I've been seeing not so positive things and I'm really interested in seeing where I lie. I know where Hannah does because she unhauled it and I've got it in my hands but yes I'm very much looking forward to trying this one. It's supposed to be a kind of dark academia book I'm curious. I'm curious. So Simone is my younger sister. You might have seen her across the vlogs. She also has a blog. She also does all of the subtitles to my videos and she sent me some books for my birthday. Thank you so much Simone. She got me the Renegades trilogy by Marissa Mayer. So again I'll be reading more Marissa Mayer. I don't think these are in the right order but we have Renegades, we have Arch Enemies and there is also 
supernova. So I know that this series is kind of her superhero trilogy where we're following these superheroes that exist in the world and somebody wants revenge. That's all I really know. Superheroes, revenge. I'm excited. Also it's Marissa Mayer. I'm gonna have such a good time reading Marissa Mayer very soon and getting into all of her books. Yes! Excitement! <laughs> This was so thoughtful. Shannon from 155 Books got me The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemisin and I think she got it for me as soon as she saw me raving about The Obelisk Gate, which is the second book in the series. I read that book and I just could not stop thinking about it and I could not stop talking about it so I was over on Instagram, I was over on Twitter, I was living. So she sent me the third book in the series and I'm so excited to read it. I'll be buddy reading this one again with my fellow middle sister April. <sighs> And the trilogy is going to come to an end. I did have some like feelings about the second book but it was still like really good at the same time so I'm very very excited to finish the series. Thank you so much for sending that Shannon. Then I got a really nice gift from my parents. So in lockdown, I don't know which year, 2021? Some point in 2021 when there was still lockdown me and my mother started watching Anne with an E and it was really nice to watch it with her in particular because when I was younger I grew up watching Anne of Green Gables, a TV series. My mum had already watched Anne of Green Gables before but she introduced me to it as a child and we watched the TV series together so that in lockdown it was just so nice to watch Anne with an E, another TV series make of Anne of Green Gables with her and it was so lovely and then in December I read Anne of Green Gables while I was in the Netherlands and sometimes I was reading it opposite her because we're the two early birds that wake up together and I told her once I finish Anne of Green Gables she can have it so I'm going to be unhauling the copy that I was reading at the time and she's going read it. All that is to say is my parents got me the rest of the series in a beautiful matching set which is so lovely of them and Anne of Green Gables was so heartwarming and just such a good vibes kind of book and I love that TV series with my whole heart. I've already started re-watching it. I can't wait to read the rest of them. I've heard that the further on you get these ones are like not as good but I don't care, I'm gonna read them all and um, I'm so excited. Thank you parents. I should probably read the titles. We've got Anne of Green Gables, Anne of Avonlea, Anne of the Island, Anne of Windy Poplars, Anne's House of Dreams, Anne of Ingleside, Rainbow Valley and Rilla of Ingleside. So those are the books. For review I was sent a copy of Wired Up Wrong by Rachel Smith. I've already talked about this extensively in a wrap up and in a vlog that you'll have seen by now. It was a really good graphic novel memoir. I highly recommend it. It's talking about Rachel Smith's experiences with mental health, depression and going through therapy and also some things with medication and such. She touches on it all in this. It's very short, it's very good. Then I saw my friends for my birthday and Faye, who you've met on this channel before while we played a game that we had no clue what we were doing. I'll leave a link to that video. They got me Strange Planet by Nathan W. Pyle. You may know the panels in this from the Instagram account where Nathan shares just these aliens who come down to earth and find things that humans have around and do very strange and for a while they're in lockdown me and Faye were just sending those back and forth to each other so they got me the book which was a really thoughtful and nice thing to do and I'm looking forward to reading my way through this one one day. And then we've got a proof and this proof wins best proof ever. It's called Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Sivin. And this one follows these two characters who used to be childhood friends and have had time apart and they come back together and they start building these video games together and they find ways to connect and find friendships and find comfort in this virtual world when they struggle to do that in reality. Which sounds great, I'm a big fan of video concept media, so anime, films, books where video games are involved. I'm always interested in reading them. They can be hit or miss but I'm really looking forward to this. I was really anticipating it this year and they did such a good job with this proof because it looks like a DVD case which I think is really great and if you slide out the book, which I can't do smoothly, if you slide out the book it looks like a DVD disc. Isn't that absolutely amazing? 
What a fantastic proof. More books from Hannah's Unhaul. So we have Lost in the Neverwoods by Aidan Thomas. I have not read my copy of Cemetery Boys yet, but I'm looking forward to it still. And this one is a Peter Pan retelling. A long time ago, not very long, but long enough ago, I read Peter Pan and I absolutely hated it. I actually have a rant review video about Peter Pan, one of the few rant reviews I've done on this channel. And so I'm always looking for stories that retell it in a way that feels good, feels better than the actual original book. So I'm hoping that this can do that and the cover is absolutely stunning. And Hannah was also unhauling XOXO by Axio. <laughs> Sorry, I, I always find that so funny, the, the title and the author's name, but it's satisfying. And this one is a contemporary young adult novel and it's about a girl who meets a K-pop singer and I think they form a romance, but she doesn't know he's a K-pop singer because there's this rule in, you know, K-pop that you cannot date while you're part of a group. So that's what this one is about. I've recently discovered the fact that I absolutely love the trope where a celebrity falls in love with a normal person, be that celebrity and um, music artist, uh, actor or whatever. So this is gonna fall into that trope just like Icarella did. I'm really looking forward to reading it. If you take the dust jacket off, it's stunning, which is very satisfying to my aesthetic loving heart. After I finished reading Geekerella, I immediately wanted to read the second book in the series, and I already own the third book, but I own this series secondhand. I bought the first one secondhand, I bought the third one secondhand, so I went online and I found on Depop the second one, Deckenhand. So I got The Princess and the Fangirl by Ashley Poston. I've already got a bookmark in because I'm halfway through this. I immediately started it after I finished Kikarella and it's great. And when I was finding that one secondhand, the seller, who I actually know in real life, she's actually a book blogger, she had more contemporaries that were young adult for sale. So I caved, I cracked, and I got Love Boat Taipei by Abigail Hingwen, which I wasn't going to read, okay? I wasn't going to read this one, but when I saw it for sale at such a cheap price, I decided to get it. And I'm ready for the romantic drama. People say the romantic drama in this one is intense. I love me some really petty romantic drama in young adult contemporary, so I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> So along with Unhaul Books, Hannah from Ledette M sent me at the same time birthday and Christmas presents. So I think this was a birthday one. This is Earthlings by Sayaka Murata. And I don't know too much about this book, but I do know that Scott from the great Scott and Nell duo of Gunpowder Fiction and Plot found this to be his favorite book of 2021, which is high praise. And therefore that is enough for me to be curious enough to want to try it. I will read this. I also got a lovely present for my birthday from the wonderful Mary from Mary Among Stories. She sent me two books and thank you Mary. One of those was Kim Jeong, born 1982 by Cho Nam Ju. And this one is a book set in Korea and it's unpacking and talking about feminism and sexism in Korea, but in a literary fiction kind of way. I have seen so much praise for this one across everywhere. Everybody seems to be loving it. And I'm really looking forward to reading it and seeing my own thoughts on it. Thank you so much, Mary. And a big thank you to Victoria from What Victoria Read. She's an absolute darling and she got me Will by Will Smith. This is his memoir. I've been watching Will Smith since before I can remember pretty much. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, The Pursuit of Happiness. And ever since then, I've been watching a lot of Will Smith. So I'm very interested in his memoir. Also, you really know you've made it when you can just have your picture on the cover and your first name which is a generic first name on the front of your book and everybody knows who it's about. That means you've really made it in life. Also, can I just say this wins like memoir covers? This really wins. So this is the other book that Abby sent me and that's October, October by Katja Balin, which has a gorgeous cover. I know that this one is a middle grade. I know it's illustrated and I actually know nothing else about it. A while back, I read Katja Balin's debut middle grade novel, which was called The Space We're In. And I absolutely loved it. I thought it was such a good book. I really liked the perspective it chose and the way it tackled its themes. I just thought it was absolutely spectacular and beautiful and everything. It was everything to me. So once I saw that she had a second book out, I've really wanted to read it ever since. So now I finally can. Thank you, Abby. I, I really am looking forward to this middle grade. And speaking of middle grade, we also have the other book that Mary from Mary Among Stories sent, and that is Proud of Me by Sarah Hager 
Holt and I've just heard really good things about this middle grade and that's why it's on my list. I've seen a lot of the British booktubers read this one and really like it. We've got some more books from Hannah. So Hannah from Ledette M also sent me, she really sent me a lot of things. Hannah, what are you doing? Thank you so much. So Hannah sent me The Girl from the Sea by Molly Knox Oostertag, Oostertag. So she is the graphic novel artist behind Witch Boy and I'm not that interested in that series of graphic novels. I've discovered that witches are not really my thing in books, which is, I didn't know that, but now I do. But she now has The Girl from the Sea, which looks like it's going to be a really cute and really sweet romance graphic novel and I really like the artwork that I can see from the flip through. I just really like graphic novels with like bright colours and really good artwork. So I'm looking forward to reading this. I think it's going to be a really sweet read. And then from Taylor, Iridescent Blaze, I've talked about her before, my YWS writing friend. She got me Donut Fall in Love by Jackie Lau, which is a new doll romance book that I saw at So Po reading. And once she did a review of this book, I knew that I really wanted to read it. First and foremost, I love donuts. Donuts are great. This is not how you spell donuts, but I love donuts. I also know that this book has grief in it and the characters are dealing with that. And it sounds just so sweet and so enjoyable and so lovely that I'm really looking forward to reading this romance. I, yeah. I'm looking forward to reading this romance. As I've said in a previous video, one of my goals is to read more romance that is not by Alexis Hall. So this can help with that. And this was the last young adult contemporary that I picked up secondhand when I bought the other two and that is My Heart Goes Bang by Caris Stainton. This one follows a group of girls who are at university. I feel like it's still rare for me to read books set at university. I don't know why that is. I don't know why there are not more of them or at least not more of them on my own radar. So I'm looking forward to reading this one just for that reason in particular. But I also know that Yas from travels in fiction really really like this one I thought it was really really good and I think it has some LGBT, LGBT plus rep in it as well it just sounds like it's going to be really sweet on the back it says five friends one house one complicated year so I'm looking forward to that you know me I just like reading contemporary books in between all the other reads that I do so then I was sent a group of Toni Morrison books by Vintage so Vintage are republishing some Toni Morrison with new covers and they're also publishing Toni Morrison's only short story for the very first time I think I'm going to fly through this it's just it's very short so I'm, I'm looking forward to reading a short story by Toni Morrison. I wonder what she's going to be doing with the short form fiction. But other than that, they also sent along the other four books that are getting new covers. And of these four, I've already read two of them. So I'll start with those. The first one is Beloved by Toni Morrison, which I read last year and it was one of my favorite books that I read last year. So I'll leave a link to that video and you should definitely go watch it and check it out because I said all that I can possibly say about this magnificent book. It's a modern classic for a reason and I just, I'm in awe of this book. I've also read The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison, which I read last year as well. I didn't love it as much as I loved Beloved, but that's because it deals with a topic that is very difficult for me to read, but it's very well written, it's very moving, and it does such a good job of character study. I really recommend The Bluest Eye. And then they also sent two books by her that I haven't read yet, but I really, really want to read. We've got Song of Solomon, which was going to be my next read, but I think I'm going to be going with Sula instead. They both just sound very good for two different reasons, and I just really want to read my way through all of Morrison's books, truly. So thank you so much, Vintage, for sending these, and these are the new covers that these editions are getting. <laughs> then I got sent for my birthday, Mouse by Art Spiegelman and this was sent my way by Scott and Nell from Gunpowder Fiction and Plot. I mentioned them in this video before. They're hilarious as well. Their gift note just made me laugh so much and they've both read this one and they did a fantastic review on it and it's been on my radar for a very long time. It's actually been on my TBR, want to read, want to get at some point list for quite a while but their review just reminded me of the fact that I really need to read this book so thank you so much for gifting it to me. I'm really looking forward to reading it even though it's going to be quite intense. Okay so this is one that I got for myself because I am vain. So in January I read 
Wait by Jeanette Winterson and I really didn't like it but one book I've really wanted to read by her for a very long time is Frankenstein because I'm a big fan of the classic novel Frankenstein and I'm writing something to do with Frankenstein and this is kind of a very interesting take on the story and therefore I wanted to read it for writing research purposes but also just because I'm interested in the book. I believe it's got some like trans representation in there and it's talking a bit about Brexit Britain, it's talking about historical, I think it's talking about technology as well, it just sounds very very interesting but for a very long time I, I, I feel like I missed my mark with this one because it came out in paperback and I think the paperback, the reversal of colours where the bright pink is the background and the blue is the text is ugly. I think it's so ugly but that's the only copy you can find in books but then I just had an epiphany to go and find a second hand copy of this in hardback and I did online and I bought it so now I actually have it and I can, I can read it in an edition that will not make me think why is this book so bright <laughs> which is so vain. And yet. So this was the other book from my friend Faye and that is The Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead. So Faye was so considerate in choosing their presents for me. I read The Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead and I was not that impressed. I was a bit underwhelmed but I would say it was a middle of the road read and Faye has read other books by Whitehead and they were like other books are better. They got me one of the ones that they'd recommended to me before and that's The Nickel Boys. I can't remember exactly what this one is about but I am looking forward to it. I think Whitehead has some very interesting commentary and I'm just curious to see if I'll be able to like his style in a different book. On my actual birthday, I went book shopping with my oldest sister and it was so great. We went to three bookshops. I've got a vlog of it, so I'll leave a link to that somewhere. And we had such a good time and we both bought seven books and I didn't pay for these books, my sister bought them for me or my nan had given me some money to spend so she also bought them for me. Uh, I'm, I'm very excited about all of them, all of them were on my what to get at some point list and I found some for some very good prices. So the first one is Lustre by Raven Lalani and kind of like I said with Frankenstein, the hardback cover of this is just so ugly to me. I do not like the white bolding around the edge so when I saw the paperback where that white bolding is not there I wanted to get it. I've heard that this one is funny but it's also touching on some very important themes in terms of the black culture and experience so I'm looking forward to trying it for myself. I've just heard quite a lot about it. Then we have The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. I've just been scared of this book for a very long time. Sylvia Plath is my favourite poet. I love her poetry so 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 much that it's kind of scared me off reading her fiction novel because I'm worried if I don't like it. Which is a ridiculous reason to avoid reading something so when I saw this very gold bold cover I decided to go and finally get it. This one seems to be fiction but it seems to also kind of draw from some of the experiences that Plath had in her own life and I've heard it's very sad and dark but I've also been warned that there is racism in this one so I'm just going in prepared for that too. The classic Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. This is a very well-known classic. It's dystopian. It's one of the great dystopians that people talk about. I really don't know how I'm going to feel about it but I did want to read it just to read it and see for myself. So when I saw this for a very cheap price in Judd Books I decided to get it. Same story goes for 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. This is a very well-known and much beloved classic worldwide but also especially in Latin American culture. It's one of my friend's favourite books and therefore it's high time that I get to it. I always want to try and read classics that are classics from around the world rather than just only British and American classics so need to get better at doing that and I thought I should pick some up. I don't know what happened in January but I suddenly like panicked that I wasn't reading enough classics, I didn't have enough classics. So I got quite a few classics, so you're about to see. So I also got Catch-22 by Joseph Heller. This is one where the situation that is in happening in this classic sounds very interesting to me and people often refer to a Catch-22 situation and I don't know, there's just something about classics that get referenced to a lot that make me want to read them and see for myself. I didn't realise this was as big a book as it is. I thought it was shorter for some reason but still gonna read it. And then I got books by authors that I've wanted to read more of their works from. I'm also trying to get better at doing that. So we have Trumpet by Jackie Kay. I read her play The Lamplighter 
and absolutely loved it. I thought it was beautiful and fantastic and since then I've wanted to read one of her fiction works and I've just heard brilliant things about Trumpet. Everybody says it's emotional and it's so 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 good so I'm looking forward to trying it for myself and then we've also got The Illustrated Man by Ray Bradbury and I loved Fahrenheit 451. I thought it was fantastic and such good writing and beautiful and it's made me want to read more Ray Bradbury. I know Lena from Lena Reads also really likes his work so decided to pick up more and this is a short story collection that I've been meaning to get to for a very long time. I actually even bought this once but it was delivered to me in a pitiful condition where you couldn't even read it so I had to send it back. I got a birthday present for myself. <laughs> it was books. Surprise. So I bought myself some classics because I discovered on the HarperCollins site that these classics are about two to three pounds each. And then if it's your first time buying from them and you sign up to their newsletter, you get a percentage off. So I did and I got all these classics for my birthday. <laughs> I told you I was worried about not having enough classics to choose from. I don't know why. I read enough classics. Anyway, <laughs> so. First of all, we've got To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. I've been meaning to try some of Virginia Woolf's fiction and there'll be a reason why I got this one in an unhaul that will come up at some point. So yeah, I got To the Lighthouse. I read the synopsis of The Waves and this one and I thought between the two, this is the one that sounds more up my alley. I got 12 Years a Slave by Solomon Northup, which is actually one I've already read before. I read this before I saw the film and it was a very hard and intense read and very emotional. And this, the writing style is quite different because it's so old and it's written such a long time ago. But yes, this story was really emotional. It really struck me and I do recommend reading it. And then I watched the film, which was a brilliant recreation of this narrative. And it was emotional and amazing. And I actually went onto the site to buy this book because I wanted to own it for my shelves. And then I ended up with all these other classics too. The Turn of the Screw by Henry James. This has been sitting on my Kindle for a very long time, but I'm not reading my eBooks at the moment just because I haven't been traveling and I mostly read my eBooks when I go abroad, but I haven't been going abroad. So I decided to just get it as a physical copy because I really, really want to read this so then I can watch The Haunting of Bly Manor and read the Ruth Ware book. So I need to read this very soon. Also, I love Gothic, so should be good. The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman, which I do own another copy of, and it's one of my favorite short stories ever, and I've read it so many times now, but the most important thing about this edition that says The Yellow Wallpaper on it, it also says, and Herland. So Herland is a novel of Charlotte Perkins Gilman's, which is quite feminist. I can't recall exactly how, I believe maybe it's a world where it's just only woman. And I've really wanted to read that for a long time, but all of the editions of it are so ugly. And when I saw one that combined the yellow wallpaper and this in one book, I thought I should get that edition. We have Inferno by Dante Alighieri. I have just suddenly felt a need to read this book. I, I don't know what where it happened at some point. I heard about this and I thought, why haven't I read Inferno before? So now I want to read the trilogy. So I got the first one. We have The Time Machine by H.G. Wells. I read The Invisible Man by H.G. Wells. The second time I ever did 30 books in 30 days to finish off that that 30 books in 30 days and I really enjoyed it so I've been meaning to read more by him since and The Time Machine is one of his famous famous ones so I thought that would be a good place to continue and we have The Iliad by Homer and I've wanted to read this for a while it's just one of those books that I want to read. Hannah from Ledette M we're back to her unhaul she unhauled Dune by Frank Herbert so I decided I would give it a shot I'm well aware that this is going to be quite a colonialist, white, sci-fi, kind of traditional classic sci-fi, but I, I still want to give it a shot. There's some books that, even though I'm unsure whether I'm going to like them or not, I still want to give them a fair fighting chance, and as Hannah was unhauling this, it meant I didn't have to pay for it or anything, so I decided I would give it a shot. Oh, so this is from my best friend. She got me The Secret Speech by Tom Rob Smith. So we did a vlog together where we swapped reading each other's favourite books and her favourite book is Child 44, the first one in this series. And I read it and I was so surprised by how much I really enjoyed the thriller and I had such a good time. And she surprised me with the second book on my birthday. So now I get to read and continue the series. So go back to those characters and read this next thriller. I hope it's just as good as the first one and I'm, I'm really looking forward to reading this. Thank you, Yana. I actually won a giveaway <laughs> and 
I can't believe I won this giveaway. I will get every single book, a copy of every single book that Hotkey Books YA publishes this year. I can't believe it. I can't believe I won that kind of Christmas giveaway. So you just enter those, you don't think you're gonna win anything. So I won it and I'm probably not gonna keep every single book because maybe they publish books in a series that I don't intend to start or things like that. But these are the two books that they sent me in January that I am going to keep and want to read. So the first one is The Ivory Key. It says on the cover, four siblings, a country in ruin, one quest to save them all. So it's a fantasy book and that just sounded really good to me. So I thought, why not keep that one? And also Robin Hood, Robert Mitchum's Robin Hood, Thrones, Dams and Destruction. So this series, so this is not even the first one in this middle grade series. It's somewhere, I think it's fourth or something or fifth and it's a series where Robin Hood exists and he's got his merry men with them but it's kind of set in the contemporary day and as you can see like drones are involved so each one is an adventure that is set in this world with Robin Hood where it's modern day and this is the fifth one in the series I think I'm going to be able to race through it I read Robert Murchamore books when I was younger and I really enjoyed them so I'm looking forward to this and even though it's the fifth one in a series it seems like one of those series where you don't have to read them chronologically I sent this middle grade for review it's called Karen Battle and the Hidden Kingdoms by Jamar J Perry and we're following this young black boy who decides that he's going to explore the hidden kingdoms and he's trying to find peace and discover the truths of his histories he's got some ancestry magic within him is going to help him do so and it just sounds really fun and really cute and i love seeing all of these diverse middle grade books coming out for children i fully support that notion I have a essay collection that i'm very very excited for this one is called out of the sun by essie edugan and the cover is absolutely stunning. It looks like a piece of art, but what I really like about this collection of essays is that it not only explores history, but it's also exploring a lot of contemporary subjects. So just to give you a taste, it's seeking out stories of black lives that history has ignored and overwritten. And while she's explaining about the characters of history that are missing, there's the narrative of the Black Lives Matter movement and the impact of George Floyd's murder kind of in the background of all of these essays and she also takes the chance to reflect on her Ghanaian heritage and identity while also exploring these concepts and histories. So it just sounds like a blend of everything that I'm truly interested in and I'm so so excited for this essay collection. Probably the next essay collection I'm going to be reading this year. We are The Brennans by Tracy Lang and I just decided I wanted to give this one a try. It doesn't sound like something I would usually pick up but it interested me enough to be pulled towards it so we're following this family who have a lot of secrets and one of them has been away for a very long time but she comes home and with her comes somebody who is kind of stalking her and she's bringing a boy to her past who's kind of tracking her and as she decides as she needs to do something about this some secrets about the family get unearthed and I don't know I'm, I'm quite enjoying books about secrets and families and having to work through it. Yes, that's Echoes of Stay Another Day by Juno Dawson coming through into what I'm picking up at the moment. We have Memphis by Tara M. Stringfellow and this one is following three generations of a black family and is focusing on the black woman in this family and how their lives and identities are all interconnected. And it just sounds like it's not only going to be one that could be harrowing in moments and could be very truthful and raw, but also one that has quite some black female celebration in it too, which I'm always here for. And then last but not least, we have my Christmas gift from Hannah from Ladem M and that is The Great Dream Robbery and Adventure You Won't Want to Wake Up From by Greg James and Chris Smith. And this one sounds like it's going to be a fun, enjoyable middle grade. I actually found it really funny because I've actually been really struggling with sleep again lately. And then I opened it up and in the top of the synopsis, it says, welcome to Somnia Incorporated, sleep well. And I was like, Hannah, is this a call out because my insomnia has been wrecking our writing sessions lately? But she said it wasn't, but it was a funny coincidence. So I think I'm gonna try and like, <laughs> read this before bed, try and fix my sleep pattern with this and I think it's going to be good fun. So there you have it, those are all 63 of the books that I hauled in January. Oh, in one month. 
It was my birthday month, to be fair, but still, it's a bit excessive for one month, Olivia Savannah. Do better. Okay, I've got to go and get some reading done, but please let me know in the comment section down below what is the latest book you have bought, received, borrowed, or acquired. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more, and don't you forget to hit that notification bell to be updated every time I have a new video. And you know what they say, onwards and upwards. Excelsior. It follows this, actually I'm not going to tell you about the book, so thank you. Oops. <laughs> there goes one book. Somebody help me. Okay. This is the last stack. This is the last stack.